Good morning. I'm Ann Fraley, the rector of St. Peter's Episcopal Church in South Windsor. This is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, and we are celebrating the Holy Eucharist. If you're following at home, we are starting with a hymn. Yeah. Number? 616. 616. My paperwork's over there. And all four, how many verses? One, three, and five. One, three, and five. Please join in. who are just coming in, it's a get your own chair event. So um, it's not that we didn't account for you and that there's no place for you here if you don't need a chair. We're self-chairing. And the closet is there and there's also one in the middle at the other end. We begin the service with the acclamation, page 355 in the prayer book, if you're following along there or on the first page of your order of service. Blessed be God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Following up with the Gloria, page 356. Oh, no, don't. Sorry, I have a part there. I'm trying to look at everybody and read, and it doesn't always work out well. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart 
and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Our first reading today is from 2 Samuel, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5 and 8 through 10. Here we're going to um, hear that it is made clear that God has given David his title to the throne. David is publicly anointed to rule over Judah by the council of tribal heads. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. At Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And at Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from the Nilo inward, and David became greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 45, 48, which can be found on page 561. Five, 651 in the Book of Common Prayer. <laughs> and let's read this together. Great Praise is the Lord, Lord and highly to be praised, in the city of our God, God in his holy hill. Beautiful and lofty, the joy of all the earth is the hill of Zion, the very center of the world, and the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He is known to be her future refuge. Behold, the kings of the earth assembled and marched forward together. They looked and were astounded. They retreated and fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They arrived like a woman in childbirth, like ships of the sea when the east wind shatters them. As we have heard, so have we seen. In the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, God has established her forever. We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice. Because of your judgments, they make the servant of Zion walk round about her. Count the number of her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Examine her strongholds, and that you may tell those who come after. This God is our God forever and ever. He shall be our guide forevermore. Our second reading today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. Paul continues to refute his critics who have challenged his authority and criticized his behavior. They claim to have received visions and revelations directly from God. Now, in humility, Paul speaks as though someone else had a vision, no in a person of Christ. And the phrase, third heaven, is a Jewish expression meaning to be actually in the presence of God. 
the reading. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Next hymn is number 528, verses 1 and 2, which will then be followed by the gospel, and then we'll conclude that with verses 3, 4, and 5. Number 528, Lord, you give the great commission, sung to the tune of Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? 
And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed them with, and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I'm going to need to step back. This is um, a new configuration. A different laptop um, is setting up the Facebook stream differently than normal. So things look different, and but I don't want to be with my back to anybody. So, and we're in a different space doing all this. And uh, the technology we had intended to use to launch today um, isn't working. The technology is fine, the cable isn't connecting. 
So we improvise. We've gotten really good at improvising and just making it work as best we can. Good morning. Good morning. Just a footnote on that hymn we just sang. The words were composed by our former Bishop Jeffrey Rothorn. I don't know if you were aware of that. He likes to um, take his pen and set new words to familiar music, and, and this is an example of that. Lord, you give us a great commission. So Jesus gives us a commission today in the gospel. He does so through his disciples, who he sends out into the world in groups of two to minister to people in need. But that's sort of going to the end of the story, so let's back up. Our lesson starts this morning in Jesus' hometown, where in the synagogue he gets up and says, the words today have been fulfilled in your hearing. He'd been reading from the prophet Isaiah, and he was telling people that what the, what the prophet was saying about um, basically liberating people was being fulfilled in him. Well, they didn't like that. And one person in particular decides to call him out by saying, who is this guy? We know him. We know his family. We know he's the carpenter's son. Don't expect anything from him. We know who this guy is. So, lesson number one. Beware expectations. Not just expectations we have of other people or that they may have of us, but expectations we may have of ourselves. Little story related to that. And Andrew, I'm sorry I can't see you. If I step one way, I, I block somebody out because of the computer. Beep. Back when I was graduating from seminary, a long time ago, I didn't have a job to go to. Um, we won't get into all that. But I ended up being offered the position of the Christian Ed Director at Camp Washington, our diocesan camp. I was really grateful for the job. And I thought, oh, summer at camp sounded like a really cool thing. And then I went, oh, teenagers. <laughs> I'm not good with teenagers, young teenagers in particular. And so I had some fear and trembling related to being out of camp as the Christian Ed Director. And I had five classes in the course of the day. You know, I had a curriculum. I figured all that stuff out. Bear in mind, I'd never received any education in Christian ed because I was being formed as a sacramentalist. So I didn't really know what I was doing. I tried to make it look like I knew what I was doing, and I think I pulled that off, but it was a terrifying experience for me, and I was exhausted by the end of the summer. Fast forward to about three years ago, Bishop Laura was here, and we were chatting out in the hall, and she reached out to me and she said, Anne, how would you like to be a chaplain at camp this summer? And I didn't even have to take a breath before I said to her, not on your life. <laughs> I recalled that experience from way back earlier, and I thought, I'm not going through that again. Well, maybe a month after that, I was out at Camp Washington for a retreat. I got there early to take advantage of the beauty of the place and just sort of to settle in. And as I arrived, there was a group of people meeting with the bishop and with the camp director who were going to be chaplains for the summer. And Bart Geisinger, the director, said, why don't you come in and sit in and join us? It's not a commitment. Just listen to what's going on. And I thought, well, OK, I'll do that. I'll keep an open mind. By the end of that meeting, I'd signed up for a week at camp. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, it was a fabulous experience. And I signed up the following summer. Something had been different. Something changed between that first summer back in the <clears throat> and just a few years ago. And guess what was different? Me. I had expected a particular response when the proposal was first put to me about being a chaplain. And granted, the chaplain's role is a little different from a Christian ed director. But still, the idea of being at camp with all those kids is what had kind of set me on, on edge. And I love kids, I really do. I just don't want to have to be responsible for teaching them all summer or for a whole week. But I found that if I just sat and listened with them, asked them questions, took part in their day, joined in with them in archery, for instance, or in some craft program, or just hung out at the waterfront to cheer them on as they were learning to swim or 
trying on some new, other new watercraft, I found that I had something to offer. And that helped me feel some confidence about being there and being in this role. And by the end of the week, I thought this was great. Don't sell yourself short. Jesus doesn't want us to sell ourselves short. In fact, he wants us to throw off all those expectations, like shaking the dust off of our feet, and just be open to what comes our way. It doesn't mean that things that are new aren't still gonna feel awkward and uncomfortable. They might very well. And there are certainly times when things that have always felt awkward and uncomfortable continue to do so. But I also find that I'm not the same person I was five years ago, never mind 20 years ago, or however many. And I try each and every day to be aware of those things that kind of push against me and make me feel uncomfortable. And I listen to those, and I ask myself, what is it that's got me? Now, sometimes it's simply the way I'm wired, and that's not gonna change. Technology me, no, 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 not so much. That's not gonna change. But over the last year plus, I've learned to adapt around some technology. I've learned new things. I've learned that when things don't go well or don't go right, I stay, take a step back, take a breath, and try again. And if after five times things still aren't working, I will walk away. And then I'll ask somebody else to do it for me. But in the meantime, I'm learning not just new things, new skills, and gaining new experiences, I'm changing myself. Jesus encourages me to do that. He encourages me through this particular text where people didn't expect things of him or just laughed off who he claimed to be. I don't laugh stuff off anymore. I don't let other people laugh at me. If they want to, I know how to turn my back. I know how to just let it go. And sometimes if somebody says a hard thing to me, I take it in and I visit with it. I let it sit. I look at it. And I think, where is there truth in this? And does it resonate with my own experience? Where is it making me uncomfortable? And is in that discomfort a place where Jesus can speak to me? Is it an opportunity God is putting on my doorstep? How, in this encounter, am I being given a chance to be renewed and transformed? How is God being served by my response to this opportunity? Not everything that comes our way is meant for us. Absolutely not. But so many things help us learn more about who we are with God's help. And that, I think, today in particular, is one of the valuable aspects of this particular text. One other little piece of thing, piece of story, and Amanda and Arne are part of this. Several years ago, the bishops of Province One invited all of the dioceses that border the Connecticut River to take part in a, it was called River of Life, is that the name of it? It was a journey from way up at the northern parts of the Connecticut River to canoe or kayak down over a two week period to Long Island Sound. And there were segments of the journey that you could sign on for. Our particular nearby segment happened on July 4th. Hey, that's today. That was four years ago today. And we connected, uh, we collected in Enfield, I found a paddle partner, and got in that kayak, and down the Connecticut River we went, and we took out down in Hartford near the Church of the Good Shepherd. And afterwards, Bishop Ian had done, I think, the whole two weeks of that journey, and afterwards he shared on a kind of um, video blog some of the things and experiences from that time. And my big takeaway from it is this that he said, pack light. Especially if you're in a kayak or a canoe, you don't have a lot of space for stuff. You want the essentials, sunscreen, a hat, bug repellent, and maybe a change of clothes. Somebody else was providing food, they didn't have to worry about that. But he didn't need more than that to travel down the Connecticut River in his kayak. He didn't need more than that to appreciate the beauty of what he was seeing. He didn't need more than that than to wave to people. 
And on those times when they went to shore and were having a break and encountering other people, he had an opportunity to share what this journey was about. Travel light. When we're doing our own kind of exploration about who are we, what is God trying to show to us, set down our own baggage. Set down our expectations. Set down those things that get in the way and say, no, I can't. Set down those things that said camp 20 plus years ago was miserable. And listen instead to, here's what's happening at camp now and how you can be a part of it. Set down and put aside those things that are urging you to say no. And open yourself up instead with all of who you are to considering what is being offered to you. Again, not every opportunity is going to result in a yes. Most are probably going to be a no. Those ones that make us uncomfortable. Those ones that push against us. Those ones that make us go, oh, but I can't remember the last time. And to the kids who are in this room, once upon a time, you couldn't reach a certain shelf. And guess what? Today you can. Your parents might not be happy about that. <laughs> but it's true. It's a similar thing less expected than a growth spurt and being able to do something we couldn't before because we were smaller, younger, didn't know the same things. A sixth grader doesn't know what a 12th grader does. Certain things are expected along the way to be revealed to us and make themselves known. Knowledge comes. Experience gives us lessons and wisdom. But all along the way, we have so many opportunities to keep our eyes open and to say, let me set aside my expectations and see what follows. So many lives have been changed as a result of that perspective, of that willingness to travel light. And like Jesus says, not two tunics. He didn't even give them a change of clothes. The staff, the sandals, one change of clothes. And go out into the world and share the good news and in the end, the disciples came back and had stories to tell. I look forward to hearing what stories you have to tell. Either about what's already been and your experience before now, or what comes next. It will be an exciting time, an adventurous time, a time maybe filled with a little anxiety. But God is with us each and every step of the way, and Jesus encourages us because he has come to set the captive free and to feed the hungry and to share the good news. And that has been done in your hearing. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we recite the Nicene Creed, and if you're at home, please join in on page 358. No, it's too hard. <laughs> we tweak, we constantly tweak. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We will look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people, form one, found on page 383 in the book. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, Ian, and Laura, our bishops, for Nigerian bishops John and Marcus, for Anne, our rector, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town of South Windsor, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those afflicted with the coronavirus, including Becca, including Becca, their families and communities, for those whose work puts them at risk of infection, for healthcare workers and professionals who continue to treat individuals infected by the virus, and for their families, for nursing homes, staff, and residents, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick or suffering, especially Ken, Marissa, Hal, Madeline, Ralph, and H, the Snow and Myers families, and those committed to our ongoing prayers. For the victims of the Champlain Tower South building collapse in Surfside, Florida, their families and friends, and for those engaged in the recovery effort. For the concerns and organizations supported by St. Peter's through Mission, especially Africa Education Partnership. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being free from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. Are there others? For these concerns, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For members of our armed forces serving at home and abroad and for their families, especially Kenneth Braley Jr., who is deployed, Kevin Merrill, Jason Sara, Jason Dorval, and Ryan Lee, for victims of natural disasters and human violence throughout the world, especially those who have been victims of recent gun violence. For persons and communities impacted by centuries of anti-black bias and for others seeking to undo the harm of racism. For groups to whom we extend hospitality through the use of our building, especially Al-Anon, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. In our parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the freedoms we enjoy as citizens of this country, for the ministry of the Altar Guild, for parish members the Griswold, Hartley, and Healy families, for Dan Ostrowski, Christopher Pyle, and Linda Redinger, who are celebrating birthdays this week, and Sharon and David Van Meel, who are celebrating an anniversary. For all the blessings of this life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the repose of the souls of the more than 605,000 people in the United States, and nearly four million people worldwide whose lives have been lost as a result of the coronavirus, and for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Peter and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God.
Almighty God, you have made us in your image and call us to share in the renewal of this world. Inspire us to seek and serve Christ in all persons, that the proclamation of your good news in our worship, in our words, and in our work may lead us into the fullness of your love. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Using the form of confession found on page 360 in the prayer book, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Please take a moment to greet each other with a sign of God's grace. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. We continue with the great thanksgiving. If you're following at home, we are on page 365. No, we're not. 61. Let's say that again somehow. 61. It's been a long time. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. On the night he, he stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So last week, because it was an uneven kind of road thing, I inadvertently missed a couple people. So if that happens to you, flag me down. I've got words for everybody.
in the prayer of thanksgiving found on page 365 in the prayer book. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Tend the sick. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God's Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you. Amen. A couple of announcements before we go into our last hymn. One is the Mission Commission has assembled care bags for you to take with you to have in your car so that if you encounter or when you encounter a homeless person or another person in need, you have one that you can hand to them. They've got some kind of basic hygiene related things, toothpaste, toothbrushes, some hand sanitizer, some soap, a couple of gift cards. Um, you know, five dollar gift cards for Dunkin' Donuts and stuff, some socks, just little things. They're small, the, the small size um, zip bags. So please take one or two of those to have with you to minister to those in need this summer. Um, they'll also be available on other days of the week if you come by the church, we'll have them for you there. Also, Hartford Bags of Love is sponsoring a, um, what they're calling Summer Fest. It's two weeks from this weekend on Saturday and Sunday, and they're looking for some volunteers to help with parking, um, kind of three people per shift of, I don't know, one or two hours, and they've reached out to us. So if you would like to, and they need, they've got Saturday covered, they need some help on Sunday. If you would like to help out with that effort, um, they would be grateful. It would be a way to sort of just connect with those folks and be part of that celebration. Summerfest is free to the public. Where is it? Um, it's going to be at the is it Robert Mitchell <coughs> Park on Brookfield Street. Okay, that's what the Facebook okay. event page says. And I, I tried to find it on a map and I had a little it's trouble. So Rice Street, I think. It, no. No. It's on Brookfield, I believe. On Brookfield. It's a relatively new, um, relatively new open fields where they have walking fair. I believe. Yeah. Or walking fair itself. Yeah. Okay, so if you I think believe. the walking fair, all right, um, we can put more information out. Mark just reached out yesterday, so I'm a little short on the details, but wanted to share that information with you. Again, welcome back. It's so great to see people here inside the church. And for those of you who are here, you get to stay and enjoy some coffee hour. There's cupcakes and fruit and coffee and maybe something else. Um, but we're delighted. So on that note, turn the page. Our closing hymn is number 718, God of Our Fathers, Whose Almighty Hand, verses 1 through 3.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a blessed day.